It was five weeks ago that Danny Heinrich confessed to kidnapping and killing Jacob Wetterling. Today, Jacob's parents, Jerry and Patty Wetterling, are speaking out about how they and their family are coping. To this day, I will, I'll probably never understand. He let all of his other victims go, and Jacob did nothing wrong. He just wanted to go home. In a sit-down interview with Esme Murphy, the Wetterlings described their shock over the sudden end of their search for Jacob, their horror at the details of his death, and how they're overwhelmed by the tributes to Jacob. We've been gifted to, to receive um, it's just so much love and support, and it's, it's been truly what sustains us. Well, it, only, it only sh also shows how strong Jacob's spirit is. I mean, that gunshot snuffed his breath out in October 22nd, 89, but his spirit is so strong, you can just see how it affects people. Jerry and Patty Wetterling say it is Jacob's spirit that has also helped them cope. For almost 27 years, we're searching, and then in seven days, it was eight total, it's over. How are you doing? That's the hardest question to answer. You know, it's day to day. It was just six weeks ago when they were first told of the possibility that Danny Heinrich, awaiting trial on child porn charges, might be willing to lead investigator to Jacob's body in exchange for a plea deal. The very next day, the Wetterlings agreed to the deal. Was it a hard decision? No, not really. For nearly 27 years, we've been looking for Jacob. We wanted to know where's Jacob. Less than 24 hours later, Patty Wetterling got a phone call from the lead prosecutor. It was around noon, I think, when they found Jacob's jacket, which was heartbreaking to me. One thing that nobody will ever know is the intensity of these phone calls to, to call Jerry and tell him it was hard. We later had to call our children and tell them that, that they'd found his jacket um, and th those were grueling phone calls to make. In all of these years, we've never had any piece of evidence to show Jacob was not alive. They both went to the farm that day, staying only briefly. We didn't go anywhere close to where they were digging, but Jacob wasn't alive there, and I, I didn't want to stay. The next few days, more of Jacob's remains were found. On Labor Day, the family was given the details of Heinrich's confession, and the next day, they heard Heinrich in court in a matter-of-fact tone, explain how he abducted Jacob, handcuffed him, drove him to Painesville, molested him, and then shot him when he thought law enforcement was approaching. I don't even know how to describe what it felt like hearing his words. I, when he came into the courtroom, all I could look at him and say is, how could you? It was actually absolutely stunning to try and process. How do you shift your head from, from hoping and searching and to now knowing that um, that he, he wasn't alive and what a horrible death. They both say they are not second-guessing law enforcement. Danny Heinrich was an early suspect but dropped off investigators radar for a quarter of a century. It's so easy to to look at a situation from today's uh, perspective. As for the future, the Wetterlings say they will continue their work on behalf of child safety and the work of the Jacob Wetterling Resource Center. There's still a lot of work to do and, and we're gaining strength to, to help, but we're just grateful for people who've carried us along the way. Esme Murphy, WCCO, 4 News. The Wetterlings will be offering a victim impact statement when Danny Heinrich is sentenced on child porn charges November 21st. Heinrich faces 17 years in prison. Prosecutors say that he then faces the likelihood of civil commitment as a sex offender.